one location in Middle Earth changed everything. Arguably the greatest siege battle in cinema history needed the perfect fortress. A castle that captured the imagination of Middle Earth fans first through the words of Tolkien and then the celluloid of Peter Jackson. But when the Two Towers came out in 2002, the mind of every Lord of the Rings tabletop gamer was set alight, burning with one question. How am I going to build Helm's Deep? So it begins. This incredible fortress of Rohan captured the imagination of nine-year-old Loki instantly, and I became obsessed with bringing Helm's Deep to the tabletop. It was actually the very first board build I ever tried to make in the summer of 2002. Sadly, all I managed was a lot of crumbled white polystyrene all over my bedroom floor. But today, things will be different. I have delayed making my Helm's Deep diorama for over two decades, and as I come to you right now from the Erewhon Valley, literally standing on Ed in front of the Helm's Deep filming location from Peter Jackson's trilogy, I have a secret weapon straight from the set of The Two Towers. Ever since I was eight years old, I have been obsessed with crafting little dioramas and wargaming scenery from The Lord of the Rings, mostly because of seeing the Weta Workshop team working on the massive bigotures made for the films. These bigotures were just incredible. 72 massive models of a bunch of locations, from the 7 meters tall Minas Tirith at 172nd scale to a fully watertight third scale Greyhaven's elven ship. I can still remember Mary McLaughlin Pressing those little foam bricks into Helm's Deep and then asking my mum for some foam so I could try and do the same and it did not look the same, Mary. And look, there's Helm's Deep. To uncover our Helm's Deep secret weapon, I rode my noble steed north from Edoras to Christchurch and then jumped on Middle-earth airways over the misty mountains waving to all the little goblins below and landed in Wellington, the heart of Middle-earth in Aotearoa, New Zealand and headed back once again to the folks at Weta Workshop. Now these amazingly talented crafters obviously worked on the original bigotures on The Lord of the Rings, and in the years since they have been releasing just a huge range of stunning collectibles of Middle Earth environments. And back in 2022, they released the most gorgeous Helm's Deep collectible. And we hung out with Leonard, and he chatted to me about the joys of being able to have access to the original bigotures to reference as he assembled the digital mock-up of the fortress. In the actual bigoture <laughs> reference down got. to the actual clips. <laughs> and, and as best we can, yeah, because yeah, you yeah. can't have some sheer clip where there was none. Now the Weta team having access to the original bigotures is pretty special, as Leonard was able to take measurements and photos to build up the digital models which makes their environments incredibly screen accurate and just a wonderful reference for crafters like me. Earlier this year I built this epic Greyhaven's diorama using digital models that the Weta Workshop team created to make their own Greyhaven's collectible by converting scan data from the original Greyhaven's filming bigature. I took these and upscaled them and built them into a landscape that is now incredibly screen accurate, but also adapted it to make it suitable for wargaming. Now, as soon as that project was kicking off, I've been dreaming about doing exactly the same thing for Helm's Deep. And the Weta Workshop team, they said yes. <laughs> so today we are beginning a journey to recreate Weta Workshop's incredible Helm's Deep collectible, something like 12 times bigger to transport it to Warhammer scale so that we can play out the Siege of Helm's Deep with Lord of the Rings Warhammer. This is going to be a mental project spanning multiple videos because there is so much to do. The digital models need to be converted to the right scale, a huge amount of components need to be printed and then finished with surface texturing and then built into a massive landscape. Just like the Greyhaven's board here, Helm's Deep is going to be the ultimate hybrid of hobby crafting techniques. I'm talking 3D printing, foam carving, hand sculpting, plaster rock molds, flocks, static grass, a cheeky resin pour, and surely we can work out some way to blow up the deeping wall. So our journey begins in earnest up in Wellington, where Leonard was gracious enough to let me hijack his workstation and settle down into a monster blender session. Having Leonard on hand whilst working through all these digital files that he sculpted is an absolute blessing, so it's time to get cracking and start bringing these files to life. Now Leonard has sculpted up the city in parts, but our first step before we start cutting it up for the print bed is working out our scaling factor. Now this is a really simple task, we simply select all the STLs and 
compress scale, but working out the exact value to scale these files is a massive decision, and if we get it wrong, it is going to cost me a huge amount in wasted filament and time. So I started by scaling the collectible files by 10 times, which is roughly what I'd done with Greyhavens, and then I dropped in a 25mm base, which is a nice frame of reference for our wargaming, and I realised quickly the fortress was way too big. The Weta Helms Deep collectible starts off in a larger scale than Greyhavens, so that makes sense. I rescaled to 8 times and then jumped over to the films and had a look at the shots of the deeping wall. We can see the elves are sort of three ranks deep there, but those actors are packed a little tighter than models would stand on their 25mm wargaming bases, so for screen accuracy, I think a width of about 50mm behind the battlement feels right. Then I began a massive process that took me about four hours. I grabbed a couple of digital models, some lovely Anglo-Saxon themed STLs from Medbury Miniatures Beowulf range, and dropped them into Blender and kind of played them around, moved them through the fortress to check if the scale felt right. And I, I hit a bit of an issue. If I make the fortress perfect to the height of the models, so that they sort of stand behind the battlements at the right level that we see in the films poking up over the top, the room inside the castle is very tight for gameplay once our figures are on those 25mm bases. But if I scale to the 25mm bases, suddenly our figures can't even see over the battlements. So after a heap of experimenting, I found a sweet spot, scaling the files 5.75 times as my general scaling factor, and then we'll tweak a few things as we go along to improve the gameplay. With scaling sorted, it's time to prepare our files for printing and work out how to approach this massive location. The Helm's Deep Castle is huge, so I think our first step is going to be the deeping wall. It's a relatively simple element in the fortress, and it's going to be the perfect case study for our full workflow. So I jumped back into Blender and spent hours cutting up and rebuilding the deeping wall into six smaller sections that will actually fit on a print bed. This was a gnarly process. These files were never meant to be scaled this big, and as soon as I started making cuts, the mesh became basically unprintable, so I had to rebuild sections and repair a bunch of issues, and then I slapped the first test print onto the FDM prototyping printers at Weta Workshop, and then jumped on a plane back down to the South Island to Zorpa Zorp HQ. So this bad boy just arrived fresh off the printers in Wellington, and it's pretty great. All of the key shapes are here. This is definitely going to work, but just like when we did the Greyhaven prints, when these get upscaled, they need a little bit of work to make them truly worthy of Middle Earth. First job is cleanup. I grabbed a scalpel and trimmed off all the flash and stringing filament, and then the first big issue you'll notice is the depth of the grout lines. For the collectible, these grout lines have to be exaggerated so that they actually read at such a small scale, but 5.7 times bigger, and they're way too deep. So just like the Greyhaven's Elven stonework, it's time to do some grouting. I grabbed some filler and mixed it into a paste and then smeared it all over our wall piece, and this worked beautifully, reducing that grout grout depth, and already the stonework is looking much more realistic, and we've got the beginnings of a texture profile as well. But as Helm's Deep is literally all about the stonework, this time unlike the Grey Havens, we're going to go a whole step further to really enhance this diorama by re-carving that stone texture into the surface of the brickworks, but I don't really know how. Luckily though, back in 2022, Leonard talked me through his whole process for texturing the collectible in detail. So this stuff. This gives a really cool texture. We just, um, I've got this, this really um, dirty little jar of stuff with my little swill pit in the top there. Yeah. And, uh, and, the, and so this has just got like to me a lacquer thinners, which, and then you just use a, a brush. You, you blend it out into yeah. the putty. So armed with the same to me a putty Leonard uses, I set about working how to adapt his sculpting technique to a much larger scale. I began by just smearing a bunch of the putty on each of the little bricks and then stippling it out with my brush before it started to harden to try and break up that bottle squeezed look. And then as it got harder and began to skin over, I brought in the classic Zorbazorp foam texturing aid, aluminium foil, and rolled and dabbed and pushed to try and break up that smeared on putty look. Obviously, we've got a bunch of gritty textures there already from the filler that we used for grouting, so the 3D print lines are long gone between these two layers of putty, but the main job of this new putty is not to hide the printing plastic, but to actually look like damn stone. And honestly, it's a bit hard to tell if this is working, so after experimenting all over the first test piece, 
I let it dry and then took it outside and gave it a big prime in Rust-Oleum Grey and then a Zenithal with light grey from above which helps accent our newly sculpted details. But of course, the best way to understand how any kind of texture is reading on a piece is a big chonkin' black wash. So a test piece is looking pretty nice once it's got a bit of paint on it. I'm gonna adjust my technique a little bit to try and maximize the kind of realism in the stonework, but I'm happy with the process. So now, we just need a lot more walls. Now, I don't actually have these files myself. They have to remain at Weta Workshop, and the workshop prototyping printers which I used for Grey Havens had suddenly become very busy, and Helmsteep is absolutely massive, so I'm gonna need to do a lot of printing. So I reached out to Elegant and told them about this frankly slightly mental project and they just jumped at the chance to get involved and sent me three of their absolute beast Neptune 4 Max FDM printers which we set up in Wellington and got printing. Now these guys are huge, the biggest printers I've ever worked with which is going to be crucial because it means I can break Helm's Deep up into larger parts which means less dodgy joins to blend together and they're super fast with a max speed of 500 millimeters per second. They've got all the juicy goodness you'd expect from a modern printer these days, auto-leveling print bed, high temperature nozzles, and they're about as plug and play as a printer can get, and they have just been absolute workhorses on this project. Up first I fired out a bunch more prints of the deeping wall and then sliced up a whole bunch of the rest of the fortress and left those queued up to print while I was back down at Zorbazorb HQ. The other huge benefit of the Neptune 4 Max is the print volume. This is a massive chunk of Hornberg wall and it saves me so much time being able to print this big. And of course a massive shout out to the folks at Elegoo. We would not have been able to do this project without them. If you're in the market for a 3D printer. Elegoo have an amazing range of options. I've got a link down in my description, so go and check them out. So back in the studio, it was time to get the rest of the walls cleaned up, and soon we'll finally see how long this damn deeping wall actually is. But these prints are a little different. While I was up in Wellington, Leonard actually hit me up with a higher quality set of files that has been treated with a noise generation pass to give that flat stone surface a little bit more of an uneven texture, which could give us a real boost for our stone detailing. But one of the downsides is that it does cause a few more misprints as these files are kind of barely holding together upscale to this size, but thankfully the Neptune 4 Max printers are really forgiving, so with a bunch of extra supports, I managed to get these onto the workbench without too much work. So I dived into cleaning up the prints, removing any flash and any of the misprinted stone tiles, which I'll rebuild out of foam later on, and then our all-important culvert needs some iron bars, which I actually stole from a gorgeous resin detail piece that Elby from Microforge Mini sent me. Shout out to Elby and his stunning resin detail gribblies. You'll see more of those next month. And then just like the first test piece, I gave everything a prime with automotive filler primer. This primer helps to start burying those print lines, but it's also an incredibly high bonding primer. So as we apply our texture layers over the top, none of them are going to peel off that shiny FDM plastic. Once they were all primed, I jumped into a monster grouting session, just smearing filler all over these bad boys. Now, a bunch of these pieces had some real issues when they were upscaled, where entire bricks were essentially floating in space in the digital file, and I didn't realize and didn't reinforce them in Blender before printing. So naturally, when the printer got to that section of the file, it printed in midair and those blocks didn't form. So I grabbed a bunch of XPS foam and carved up a few replacement bricks, and after a big grout treatment, you can't even tell the foam and the plastic bricks apart. Next, I glued our first test wall piece to the second chunk to form our first complete stretch of wall. Some extreme strength liquid nails held it together beautifully, and then I grabbed our Tamiya putty and started working on blending the two pieces together, but this time I grabbed some acetone, which thins the lacquer base putty beautifully and was able to get a really sexy join by thinning that down and blending it all together. I then remembered that this was sort of the whole premise of Leonard's sculpting technique, and so I tried working a whole bunch of acetone into the rest of the wall as I added my texture layer, and it definitely got some better results. The real trick was to blend and smooth it all out with an acetone-soaked brush rather than stippling it, and then once it had skinned, but before it was fully dry, to work into it with acetone-dipped aluminium foil. These first two walls were the only two sections I printed using the textureless files before Leonard added the noise-generated digital 
digital texture, so all of this texture work was mega important. But as I grouted the remaining wall pieces, I realized I didn't really need that much of the second stage of texturing on these new walls. Instead, I just used the Tamiya putty to do all of the blends between the pieces and to add a few spicy details here and there as focal points. The final detail was a cheeky upper stairwell, which I'd forgotten to glue in, which was cut down, installed, and textured with more Tamiya putty, which is just some sort of magic sorcery for blending these plastics together. This is huge, like nearly a meter and a half just for the deeping wall. This is gonna be one big bloody diorama once we start adding the Hornburg castle in. All these pieces are glued up and textured, and you will notice that this little piece here with our spicy culvert is removable because we are gonna have some explosive shenanigans unfolding there. Really, really happy with how this has come together so far. The kind of important thing to talk about with this Helm's Deep build is it's not just an exciting project in and of itself, it's the first step on the Rohan Megaboard journey. I'm sure most of you viewers know, I'm trying to build this entire map of Middle Earth at 28 millimeter scale by building mega boards with a bunch of locations linked together. Siege of Gondor with Pelennor and Minas Tirith and Osgiliath is the first step, and we've been kicking off all these other locations, but the next big mega board for Zorp Zorp is Rohan. We're talking Helm's Deep, connecting to Edoras and Isengard with heaps of locations in between in one monster layout, and it is so good to finally have the first step on that journey. Right, let's get Get this guy painted. Now, I am so damn excited for some serious stone painting. Now, don't laugh. I know you guys think that all I do is paint grey, but this ain't Osgiliath, and this ain't the Imperial Palace. This is Helm's Deep. This is real stonework, built by the Numenorian. So that means it's getting some proper love. So after the Zenithal Prime, out comes the airbrush. Now, I gathered up a whole host of various warm and cool toned greys from the Vallejo Air Range and started exploring with undertoning by picking out a bunch of different bricks in varied hues. I ended up choosing a warm, almost earthy mid-tone grey, a cool lighter grey, and a neutral darker grey, and created a mottled patchwork of different colours to capture the varying natural tones of the stonework. It always cracks me up. When I go to town on stonework like this, so much work and so many subtle colours underneath are essential to make a grey stone look actually like realistic grey stone. When a workshop have been busy this month, not only preparing these files for me, they've also partnered up with an amazing Kiwi company called Metalbird, who are big fans of Zorp Zorp, and they've sent me these gorgeous Middle Earth metal art pieces. We've got the Witch King on Fell Beast, the Balrog, the Green Dragon, and Gandalf on Guahia. I'll be installing these around the studio and my garden in a future video, but I just had to show them to you guys. I met the team from Metalbird earlier this year, and they're lovely folks, and they just wanted to support Zorpazorp, artist to artist. So if you guys buy any of these Metalbirds through my link in the description, they'll send me a little kickback, and you can support Zorpazorp, support conservation of native bird life all around the world, and score a Middle Earth metal bird for your garden. Our next step is an overbrushing pass to blend our undertones together with our prime by using a light grey brushed down over the stonework in the same direction as our zenithal prime with the rattle can. This ensures all our new colours have the same luminance accent as our base stonework, which helps it to read realistically. Then the most important stage of all is a massive black wash. It is crazy how much this adds. Washers always do a huge amount for all paint jobs, but in particular for this type of stonework, scheme. The black wash cements the whole scheme together, giving it recessed detail and staining down our grey to the right look for Helm's Deep and blending all of our tones together. By smudging on some leftover wash with a rag, I also built up a bit of weathering and texture, which all adds to that realism, as well as some runoff staining from that glorious rain pouring down the deeping wall battlements. In the last video, we saw the Patreon honor wall start to come together. This is the Imperial Palace section, soon to be adorned with banners honouring all of my Patreons and statues for each of my Megazorptrons. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who's joined Patreon to get their name up on the honour wall and become a part of the Zorpazorp Mega Builds. And because you guys were so pumped up by the idea, I'm going to expand the honour wall over here with a Middle Earth section of the honour wall. So if you want your name on the Imperial Palace or the walls of Minas Tirith, go and check out Patreon linked down in the description. 
Patreon is just massive for me and my family. We could not do any of this craziness without it. So a massive shout out to all of my Patreons. You guys just mean so much to us. Now we need to start bringing the Deeping Wall into the mountain landscape that Helm's Deep is nestled into. So I grabbed a bunch of reference stills of the Weta Workshop collectible to get a feel for the gorgeous cliff work that Leonard sculpted and then laid down a bunch of XPS foam sheeting to begin building up our mountainside. For the cliffs themselves, we're of course going to need an absolute boatload of plaster rock molds. My mate James and I combined our shared pool of rock molds and made about a hundred plaster casts of various cliffs and outcroppings, so I am well armed with an arsenal of rockery. I then began mounting the carts to the rock face, cutting back and shaping the foam layers to act as a support, and then gluing them in place with liquid nails until the first outer face was covered. Then I grabbed some modeling compound, which is a blend of plaster and cellulose fibers, and mixed it into a paste and blended all of the carts together. The plaster of the modeling compound mixes with the plaster casts and creates a really cohesive rock face, but to get it to really blend together all perfectly, I wet my fingers and worked into the compound before it was fully set to smooth out any rough edges. I repeated this process all across the outer spur of rock that thrusts out from the valley wall as described by Tolkien, and also worked right up against the deeping wall to blend our stonework into the cliffs, and then repeated this whole process across the back and top section of our massive escarpment. Eventually, there will be even more cliffs joining this beast and wrapping around to the rest of the valley wall, and maybe, if you're all very very well behaved and this Helm's Deep series gets enough views, I'll even make the caves inside the mountains that join up with the inside of Helm's Deep's keep. I won't go mega in depth on the paint job as we'll be diving into a whole heap of rock work in great detail in the next video, but essentially a whole heap of leopard spotting and washes and overbrushes, layering as much realism into our beautiful casts as we can, and then a little bit of rubble and scenic detailing to bring our rockery to life, and then it was time to set up Helm's Deep so far. This project is finally alive and kicking. But before we wrap up, I can't resist giving you guys a taste of what's coming next. This keep is just huge. It is like the biggest 3D printing jigsaw puzzle I have ever seen. Not to mention the entire structure sits up on this massive rocky cliff. It's gonna be huge. And I want the entire structure fully finished by Christmas, just in time for some huge Helm's Deep Siege games. A huge shout out to the folks at Weta Workshop for making this all possible. Leonard, Caitlin, Jules, you guys are amazing. I've got the link to the Weta Workshop web store down in the description. They have an amazing range of Middle Earth and Warhammer collectibles, which are just absolute works of art and would look amazing in your hobby room. Don't forget to check out the epic new Middle Earth releases from Metal Bird, link down below. And a massive thank you to Elagoo for supporting all this madness with these gorgeous printers. The Neptune 4 Max has just been an absolute workhorse. So if you're in the market for an FDM printer, I can't recommend them enough. Links down in the description. Every single week from now until Christmas, I have brand new Middle Earth videos dropping right here on Zorbazorb. The next two months are going to be bigger than the Osgiliath explosion of 2022. So come on this journey with me. Like, subscribe, throw me a comment, join the Patreon if you can, and let's build Middle Earth together.